It was working. Welcome to the show. And starting off with a very quiet Monday evening, the second to last Monday evening of September of 2024. And into tonight, maybe a few rumbles of thunder, but really that's about all that we're going to be dealing with uh, for right now. But as we get into the rest of the forecast, Toward the end of the week, that's where things really start to get interesting, and we'll talk more about what that means in just a little bit. Basically, if you have any outdoor plans, excuse me, toward about uh, Thursday, Friday, somewhere in there, may want to think about some indoor plans, if at all possible. If Brian Armstrong, our our sports anchor, is listening in on this, I would pack your umbrella into this next week for Friday Night Football. Again, why in just a little bit. This is Weather Overtime. We are live on Twitch and YouTube. Again, keeping you updated as to what's going on with the forecast, especially around the Tennessee River Valley. Let's take a look around to see what's going on where it comes to anything involving uh, rain and thunderstorms. We did have some scattered thunderstorms over parts of I-40, starting to get some rumbles of thunder into and around Maryville, south of Knoxville. Not that much going on except for a few scattered showers. This right here is the News 12 viewing area. We are based in and around Chattanooga, Tennessee, southeast Tennessee, western North Carolina, northwest Georgia, and northeastern parts of Alabama. That is where we are coming from tonight. If you have questions about the forecast, especially around this particular location, go ahead excuse me, and speak up and say something. Say hello in the comments section. We have the uh, stream chat going for uh, Twitch. If anybody wants to say hi, we did have more than a few viewers last week, and we also have things going on the chat function on uh, YouTube, if you'd like to say hello there. This is just our hanging around, talking about what's going on with weather. Again, if you're on Twitch, this is not your normal singing, dancing, doing whatever type situation. We focus in on what's going on with weather, so give us a chance to talk a little bit about what's going on and what's happening in the near future. More potential of rainfall as we go into the next several days. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. It was another exceptionally hot day, 96. We broke a record high temperature today, it looks like, which was last set back in 1931. 71, 10 degrees above our normal low temperature for this morning. And again, goose eggs in the rain gauge. We did manage to pick up a little bit in the last couple of days. So now we are down to two and three quarters inches behind for the month of September. We're going to need to pick up about three inches of rain in the next few days just to get back to normal for September. And for the year, by this time tomorrow, we will be 11 inches behind on rain for the year of 2024. As of right now, if everything works, there's give or take about 12 weeks left in the year. We need to get one inch of rainfall every single week just to break even at this point, just to erase this and get back to what we would call normal. So that would be nice, but I don't think that's going to be happening, unfortunately, anytime soon. Taking a look at Island Cove Marina and Resort on the EPB Fiber Optics Weather Cam Network, 81 at the airport, clouds broken up, a little bit of some clear skies back to the west, can see some planets and stars shine out there, but otherwise looking humid and very warm. More potential of rainfall going to be coming up throughout the next several days. Temperatures right before the top of the hour. We are back to the high 70s to the lower 80s. And once again, a good possibility of seeing some very hot weather coming up as we go into uh, the next day or so. And then we start to see a little bit of some moderation taking place. But it's going to take a while for this large heat dome to be making its way out of the picture. So we've got some very toasty conditions out there throughout the rest of the forecast into tomorrow. We'll show you the seven-day forecast coming up here in just a little bit. So we may see some help where it comes to a little bit more in the way of rain. 
but unfortunately attached to that could be the potential of some windy conditions toward the end of the week and we'll show you why coming up here uh, in just a little while here's what the big picture looks like again we've got a storm system which is trying to get a little bit closer to us tonight it's not moving with all due speed and as it does this system is trying to stir up some more areas of showers and thunderstorms so i would not be surprised to see some thunderstorms overnight to our west or to our northwest <clears throat> excuse me and then we see that potential of less in the way of anything involving uh, showers and thunderstorms next week if everything works properly but this isn't everything we're looking at for right now uh, where are we looking at well you've got to go long ways south like about a thousand miles or so and as of right now the time we're talking here again it's about just shy of 10 o'clock eastern time on monday this is still potential tropical cyclone number nine this is sitting in the western caribbean south of cuba east of central america and we see the best potential of this storm system developing and continuing to work its way up uh, into the exceptionally abnormally warm gulf of mexico so this in the next day or two is going to be the storm to actually watch especially if you're going down toward the gulf coast or florida again and for right now, it's expected to become a tropical depression, a little bit more organized into the next uh, couple of days. But it's what happens after that that we're really watching for, and especially for here. Take a look at the spaghetti plots, as they are called, as we go into the next couple of days. Let me get rid of the path first. The computer models that you're taking a look at here, so-called, again, spaghetti models, because there are numerous models all over the place here that you can see with the different colored lines. These are different runs of the computer information that comes down with all the processing of the data, showing the winds, the temperature, the atmosphere. All of that gets crunched and gives us an idea as to what might happen. Now, this again is what we see over the last about 12 to 24 hours worth of number crunching. Let me put the National Hurricane Center forecast back in here again. The storm itself is currently again just hovering around the Western Caribbean. Now into the next about 24 hours toward about uh, 6 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. It's expected to be a tropical storm of about 50 miles per hour so by then it should become tropical storm helene the h named storm that is where the storm then crosses through by 6 p.m wednesday still a tropical storm just about hurricane strength and then as we get a little bit higher upwards uh, into around six o'clock in the morning on thursday that is where we see a category one storm into around 6 p.m. Thursday, the storm increases to a Category 2 storm as it now is solidly both in the Gulf of Mexico and over that loop current, as it is called, that goes through this portion of the Gulf before it heads out to become the jet stream, uh, or the Gulf Stream, I should say. This right here is where the storm could be looking at the possibility of some rapid intensification and this is where we're going to watch very carefully to see what happens because by six o'clock in the morning on <clears throat> excuse me friday right before landfall this could be a category three that's a major hurricane anything category three and above is considered a major hurricane so that is right before it hits the big bend area of florida now this is where it gets kind of interesting for our forecast now once these storms move over the land surface they lose about 50 percent of their power so by the time it hits florida southern georgia that is where we should be looking at the storm probably losing a decent amount of its structure but then by the time it hits about two o'clock in the afternoon on friday this storm system is going to be left over this will i want to point out this is not going to be a hurricane but it is possible that helene is going to re retain a decent amount of structure so we could see this system have a lot of winds winds estimated here by two o'clock in the afternoon on friday eastern time 35 mile per hour winds <clears throat> excuse me again going right over the news 12 viewing area which means this going into dismissal time for the kids on friday 
we could be looking at the potential of some breezy winds, a lot more in the way of rainfall, and again, maybe the possibility of some severe weather. We'll see what happens there. From there, the computer models notice all the lines here begin to split out and head away and that is where we see again the end of the particular threat unless this goes out over the ocean again and we see that storm picking up but the majority of the storm going right up and over the news 12 viewing area so our forecast is going to call for some changes taking place as we go into the next several days so let's go ahead and take a quick look well first of all take a look at the next five days by this time on saturday we could be looking at the potential of five to six inches in some parts of the news 12 viewing area now that is going to be the worst of it again coming up from the gulf right over parts of the southern appalachians uh, into and around portions of the southeastern united states wrapping that rain around and sending it back over toward the mississippi river valley that is where we have picked where we should be picking up a decent amount of rainfall two and a half to four inches back this direction and then more potential of rainfall here keep in mind these forecasts can shift one direction or the other so we might begin to see the potential for less in the way of anything involving uh, problems for the, the possibility of dry weather and going to be going away from there and maybe the possibility of some flash flooding that is something we are really going to have to take a look at at this point where it comes to the changes taking place there uh, respect of orange on twitch welcome to the show thanks for checking in uh, worst tropical disturbance in quite a while. Very, a very good possibility for what it looks like. Uh, from Beryl, we didn't pick up too much out of that. From Francine, we were counting on some rainfall out of that. That didn't happen either. Again, take a look at our rainfall deficit. So for right now, yeah, this could be the good, the best soaker we've seen. The one thing that I'm more worried about than anything else is that as of right now, uh, this is still several days out. So in the next several days, we're going to be seeing the changes in the forecast. When you have storm systems going on this far out, again, toward the end of the week, next weekend, there is that potential that as this storm gets closer and closer, we'll see less and less in the way of percentage of rainfall out there. It's also looking, and I should add these, I did not do that earlier, but for right now, there is the possibility that we're going to be picking up some very windy conditions coming up for Thursday and Friday. Uh, it's a good possibility that we could be seeing winds gusting over 35 miles per hour. It is possible that we could see uh, maybe some wind advisories being issued here. I don't think by this time, from what it looks like, that we're going to get any uh, inland tropical storm warnings for this area. Uh, for those of you out there who are going to say, oh, you're just making that up, there is no such thing. There is such a thing. It is from the National Weather Service. Uh, look it up. I remember having people back in when I worked in Memphis emailing me and saying, oh, those warnings, you're just making those things up. There is no such thing as a freezing fog advisory. You're just trying to get ratings. Well, no, we're not. We're trying to bring that around and let you know, the viewers, what is going on. So there might be some advisories coming our way in the next, say, 72 hours that we're going to have to watch out for. The really good news, outside of tomorrow, temperatures will be moderating, so we will be getting some nicer numbers here. High 70s to lower 80s, more cloud cover, more rainfall, more wind to stir things around. That is going to be the best news that we have had in quite some time. So the good news at this point is that we are seeing uh, the potential for less in the way of anything involving uh, dry conditions and we need this rainfall just hoping that it doesn't happen just bang all at once that would be very nice on that so this is going to have to be monitored because we may see some more problems out of this taking a quick look if i didn't delete it and i probably did give me a second to find this back okay good i did not uh from the national storm prediction center for monday for tonight and uh this is we're still looking at the potential of a marginal threat of severe weather across the northern counties. So Bledsoe, Ray, uh, Meigs, McMinn, Roan, Loudoun counties, that is where we could be looking at the potential of some severe weather for tonight. The next potential of severe weather will be again tomorrow, and that will overspread a good portion of the rest of the News 12 viewing area. 
Uh, again, we'll take a look at what we're looking at here in just a little bit. For Wednesday, the potential does exist of some thunderstorms, but for right now, it does not look like we are seeing anything uh, in the way of a major problem where it comes to severe weather in and around the area of Wednesday. So that's good news, but until then, for Monday, and again, for Tuesday, we might be looking at the possibility of some severe weather as that system out west moves our direction. This is because of that system, not what could be Tropical Storm or Hurricane Helene in the next 24 to 48 hours. So what are we looking at? For right now, the best potential from what we can see is uh, damaging winds and also the possibility of some large hail. Again, what you're looking at here, this is the potential of a marginal threat of severe weather. This is not anything to do with a huge severe weather outbreak. So possibility of some damaging winds and also some in the way of large hail. There does not appear to be anything else. Tornado threat is low and mainly out west. And then also the threat of flash flooding appears to be very much on the low side. So, so far so good on uh, the news there. So we'll continue to monitor that throughout the course of the next several days. All right, that's about it for the uh, presentation that we have for right now, talking about what's going on with the tropics. want to make certain everybody's ready for this. This is coming up tomorrow, Tuesday, the 24th, 1 p.m. Eastern, an online weather panel brought to you by the American Meteorological Society and the female-led storm chase group, Girls Who Chase a great opportunity if you've ever had a question about getting a degree in atmospheric science meteorology climatology things like that if you know a kid out there or a younger person who would like to know more about getting a degree and becoming a meteorologist if you're interested in storm chasing and don't know where to start safely storm chasing wisely storm chasing this is one of the better things you can possibly do is sign up this is not a live back and forth type situation this is more like a reddit ask me anything ama to where you send your information in and you can find out more through these uh, fine ladies here ginger z chief meteorologist of abc news Elizabeth Lightman, forecaster from the Storm Prediction Center. I follow her on Twitter. Very good insights as to what goes in to issuing a storm forecast. Karen Kosiba, managing director of the Dow Doppler on Wheels facility, DOW. And Melanie Metz, veteran chaser and storm photographer. They are all going to be on this Zoom panel tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This is going to be a great opportunity to ask questions if you have any ideas about or any questions about getting a degree or storm chasing safely and successfully. More information you can find through the AMS Weather Band site. You can get there by going to ametsocametsoc.org or you can search out there again for Girls Who Chase and more information about what they do and how they do it. This is a, a stellar opportunity to learn more from experts in the field. And if you'd like to know more, tomorrow's your day. Find out more through my social media pages if you'd like to look and see what's going on there. All right, I want to remind you also of the National Weather Service coming up in the next couple of weeks in just about... you really got to keep better track of these things. Okay, coming up in about uh, 15 days, a little bit less than that, uh, this will be from the National Weather Service in Morristown. They're holding an open house in Morristown at 5974 Commerce Boulevard, Morristown, Tennessee. These are rare. If you've never had the chance to go to an open house from the National Weather Service, maybe you have a youngster at home, child, grandchild, who would like to know more and watch what goes on at the National Weather Service. Maybe you've never seen what goes on at the National Weather Service. Maybe you are one of those people who agree politically with the idea that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration should be done away with because all they do is talk about climate change, according to what I've heard about some of the statements. Well, here's your opportunity to go and see what NOAA does and why getting rid of NOAA would be a colossal overblown idea of a mistake 
This is not a good idea to get rid of a government agency that does so many things to keep you safe, to help businesses thrive, to help everybody stay safe on this planet. Do they talk about climate change? Yes, that's part of what they do to study the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, studying the oceans, studying the atmosphere of the planet to find out what is going on. And yes, climate change is happening and we are, as humans, a major league responsibility for climate change happening. Getting rid of NOAA to get rid of talking about climate change is not going to help anybody. It's going to be a very short-sighted thing to do, and climate change is still going to be going on, and around the rest of the world, sticking your fingers in your ears and humming really loud is not going to help you or anybody else on the planet. So if you would like to find out more direct from the source, here's your opportunity to go to this open house and find out more about what NOAA does. You can find out more at our website, wdef.com slash weather. If you'd like to know more, go to their website, weather.gov slash mrx. That's the three-letter code for Morristown if you'd like to find out more there. I'm going to try to be there myself because I haven't been to a National Weather Service open house like this since, I believe, in Memphis or quite possibly in Fort Smith when we were under the jurisdiction of Tulsa and Little Rock. So, prime opportunity to get to know the National Weather Service, the core partner agencies that work with the National Weather Service. If you're firmly in favor of this project's idea of canning NOAA and you want to turn everything over to a private agency, ask yourself how is that agency going to duplicate everything that NOAA does if NOAA is wiped out? Some people say, oh, you're just overreacting. It won't happen. Well, I believe in believing people when they tell you who they are the first time around. And I think this is serious enough to take as a threat to say, we want to get rid of NOAA because it talks too much about climate change. Okay, find out why they talk about climate change. Getting rid of them will not stop anything. It actually is not going to help anybody but a core company that might take over as a privatized weather firm, causing you to pay your taxes for weather one time and a subscription to get weather information a second time around. This idea of canning NOAA makes no sense to me whatsoever. Scientifically, politically, just in general, intelligently, it doesn't make sense. So if you would like to know more, here's your opportunity to ask questions about what NOAA does under the branch of the United States Department of Commerce. National Hurricane Center, Storm Prediction Center, National Weather Service, the Digital Coast Agency, the Marine Debris Studies, all of that, much, much more goes on. Satellite information, temperature data that is shared around the world, all that stuff goes on. If you want to stick your fingers in your ears and say climate change isn't happening, we'll let the rest of the world worry about it. That's a very poor way of doing things. So please consider going to this open house and asking questions and finding out more. That's the best way to find out what happens and how you can help on things like that. So please uh, consider that if at all possible. Again, that's coming up on the 28th of September. So good opportunity to find more. Did not get a location on this, but I'm guessing that Karen Luksek, being from Cleveland, Tennessee, that looks very much like the Cleveland, Tennessee exit and a rainbow right above that area. I guess we know where we were going to be able to find the pot of gold on the 13th of September. Thank you very much, Karen Lutzak, one of our viewers from Cleveland, for sending in our Langley Roofing weather window picture of the day. If you've got pictures, we're not picky as long as they're weather-oriented. We don't care where they come from. You can be anonymous if you want to. You can email them to us. You can get them to our website, or you can drop them to the comments section of our social media pages. And we'd love to see what your pictures are like so we can show them to everybody else. And all you have to do is just get them to us by this way. And yours could be the next Langley Roofing weather window picture of the day. So a good opportunity to find out a little bit more there. All right, into tomorrow. Uh, probably will not need the umbrella. Maybe kind of sort of in the morning. Some scattered showers possible. And then better chances of rain throughout the rest of the day. A hot and humid day coming up for the kids heading off to school. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be getting the young students out there. Likewise, as the pups get out for their morning walk, they are going to need uh, some help with some rain, especially coming home. That is going to be a very 
uh, big problem. But for the morning, looks like maybe some isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms out there, and then not doing too bad for the temperatures. Wish it'd be a little bit cooler, but that's coming up later on. Thank you, News 12 viewer Jocelyn from Missionary Ridge for a view of her pup, Starbuck Benatar, which I think is going to be my new internet password one of these days. Uh, respective orange, 10%. Yeah, about that. We put the little uh, tilde in there on the former graphic uh, to show that it's going to be basically about 10%, give or take, more or less. Uh, it depends at the, as of right now. Uh, really don't like putting 5% chances in there or just maybe the carrot sign pointing to uh, way less than. But yeah, give or take about 10% somewhere in there uh, for tomorrow morning. I think there's going to be more in the potential of rainfall. Uh, this is, again, in the morning time. The way the system is working, most of the activity is going to be west of us. So I think there's a slim chance that some of that rain might make its way into the area right about the time the kids are getting on the school bus or heading to the school parking lot. So yeah, right about 10% or so. We're much more certain about better chances of rain coming up as we go toward the end of the day. So it looks like toward about dismissal time, kids running to from the school to the car rider line or the school bus, there's probably going to be some mad dashes out there with more potential of showers and thunderstorms coming on through. So this, again, could be uh, quite a situation coming our direction into Friday, especially by the end of the week. I think these numbers are going to be quite a lot higher for the end of the week. And for Friday night football, that, again, could be a bit of an issue. So if you're going to be outdoors into tomorrow, I think the best time for anything involving thunderstorms will be in the afternoon and evening. And again, mainly past lunchtime tomorrow. So canoeing, camping, hiking, whatever you've got going on for Tuesday, be prepared for some chances of showers and thunderstorms. Add to that, if you are going to be out for a round of golf, I would also be ready for the potential of some showers and thunderstorms out there. So you're going to have more than the gophers to worry about stealing your golf ball. That excuse me, also looking at some pretty hot conditions. So with the sun out between the clouds, I would take along the sunblock and I would get some extra ice water to take with you. You may just need it at some point out there for more on that. All right, I think that is about it. We've covered pretty much everything. Uh, again, please keep it tuned to News 12 for updates on potential tropical cyclone number nine. It is possible we may see Helene by this time tomorrow. So again, Now's the time to really be weather aware. If you're planning a trip to the Gulf Coast, Alabama to the east down toward Tampa St. Pete, that's the area you really need to watch out for to see what may be heading your direction. So please keep it tuned to News 12 for more on that. Questions, concerns, ideas, email for me at the bottom of the screen, aonic at wdef.com. And again, check out our website, bottom of the page, near the 12 logo at wdef.com slash weather if you'd like to know more. And of course, all of our replays are available here around wdef.com slash weather as well as our forecast. If you'd like to be a sponsor, if your business would like to have your logo up here, call or email our sales department. You can get the information again through our website at wdef.com and you can go there for more details on that. Chip Chapman's got your forecast uh, bright and early in the morning and stay tuned again. <clears throat> Pardon my allergies getting the best of me tonight. Stay tuned for more with News 12 in the morning. Chip's on at 5 a.m. with the morning show and I'll be back tomorrow afternoon and again remember that marginal threat of severe weather something we really do need to keep an eye on for tomorrow. It's not much but again something to watch out for there. All right live and direct from downtown Chattanooga I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Stay tuned for more with News 12 on air and online and we'll see you again on Tuesday. Thanks for joining us.